everyone welcome to the QE Ops channel I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to keep talking about uh, REST API testing with uh, using uh, BDD and last video we talked about uh, API the usage of API in the world and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about BDD itself and, and how is the process of using that in a, in, in a project so if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and I'll be posting the videos for the previous uh, links for the previous videos for you to keep it up. Right. So let's start. So going so going over the definition of BDD, uh, behavior driven development is a form of software software development collaboration, and it acts as a communication bridge between the business and the technology. And BDD helps the teams to communicate requirements more precisely to find issues sooner and to deliver more values to the user. So that's a very surgical cirurg definition of BDD, right? But now I'll be, I'll be bringing some, some definitions written by Aslak Helesoy, probably that's the wrong pronunciation. Uh, he's the Cucumbers creator and on that link below, you can see the actual post that I took it from, I'll be using his words uh, as quotes, and I'll also be posting this link for you to access through the description of the video as well. The first quote is, unfortunately, you cannot just download Cucumber, start write Cucumber features and expect any nirvana of truth and enlightenment to happen on its own. There is a process to follow that involves many roles on the software team. This process is called BDD. And BDD is not a tool that you can download. Gochko Adzik, probably, that, probably that's wrong too, gave BDD a new and better name, specification by example. And in the following videos, not necessarily this one because we still have a lot to cover until we reach that stage, I'll be showing you how you can actually write uh, the scenarios using specification by example. I'm going to be going through the whole process of writing these and, and automating these from the start. Right? So what is the problem in my vision uh, related to how we operate in, in many teams, how, how many teams operate, right? So the problem is we have a business person, we have a dev person and we have a QA person. The dev and the business is going to figure out the requirements. The developer is going to develop after a certain amount of time, uh, the QAs is, are going to be doing the testing and they are going to be filing issues to the developer. Okay. And, sorry, and this brings a problem which is uh, it happens a us and them situation where the developer, this is also going to be a loop, right? So it, it, it can take a long, it can be a long loop to wait for all to be good to go through production. And the us and them situation is the tests, the tester is going to be mad of the developer saying things like, come on, this do, the, 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 those people didn't, didn't do the best job that they could, they could do. There are so many basic bugs here. While the develop team is going to be say, hey, those testers keep picking up issues that works works for me. That's not a valid issue. That's not on the requirement, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the us and them situation where, and this is basically because they are on separate teams, right? Uh, it's also very common for the QA for the testers to be stretched. So let's say that we the developer the development had so. Go back, going back a little. Let's say the project needs to finish in one month, and the development asks 15 days, and the QA team asks also 15 days. If the development finish in three weeks, one week extra uh, uh, out of the time, the QAs won't have one week's ex one week extra as well as they, as they requested two. They are going, they are only going to have one week. So they're going to have to do overtime. They're going to be stressed in order to deliver that. They probably, the manager is going to be uh, on, on the QA's neck 
for the dead, for the deadline and, and stressing even them more related to the deadline. So that's the as and then situation. Cool. Going back to Aslak, your cucumber feature should drive your implementation, not reflect it. Think about that for a minute. This has a lot of implications. First of all, it means Cucumber feature should be written before the code implementing the feature. And also, the most important contributors to requirements aren't programmers or testers, it's business analysts. During this activity, the programmers and testers' primary responsibility is to ask questions and make sure they understand everything. Right? So, going to a agile development team uh, and, and if you read more about cucumber it talks about the the tres amigos which is called three amigos uh it's basically three friends uh which are the business the, the business person the dev person and the qa person and that's how they 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 collaborate in order to get to the requirement so in a in a agile team in a single agile team with no separation because even though uh, uh, a lot of teams they do agile uh, there are still division between the agile dev team and the agile QA team and for me that's not agile because you're still separating it doesn't really matter if the dev team and the QA team are trying to do some sort of agile process on their own uh, if they have Jira boards, Kanban boards, Scrum boards, or whatever board they have, if they try to follow whatever uh, uh, agile practices like planning, grooming, uh, retro, showcase, whatever, they are still a divided team. They are not the same team. So there, there is still going to be the us and them situation. There is still going to be difficulty uh, trying to merge what what is the perspective of of the development process what are the actual issues that the team as a whole is facing so for me a separate team regardless if they are using agile or not it's not a agile team because they are separate and just by being separate you cannot be as agile as you could if you were in the single team All right so going back here to the presentation so we have we would have a the three amigos the three friends planning the requirements and in this case already writing the scenarios the BDD scenarios along with whatever requirement they are getting right the the actual scenarios would be the requirements so whatever they are writing for for a specific feature it would become the story one which would be ready for development a dev person would pick it up and start doing that in progress right and now i'm going to merge with the whole uh continuous integration process as well that person in a continuous integration uh process that person would have would be writing the code and the test for it so you would write the unit test and whatever regression else there will be like functional test or contract test or whatever whatever else they, they would like to test and they would also be executing those right of course the QA person could come in and, and help them and write more or whatever but basically the, the 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 dev person would be writing the code in the unit test and running the regression right so and by running the regression since everything would be automated uh, they would be running the whole automation very often if there, there, if they find a bug or the build fails for any reason, they would keep, uh, they would keep in this loop, right? They would keep here. If they would go back to in progress, and they would keep in this loop here specifically uh, until they found uh, the solution, right? And this would be very straightforward because if there would be a bug just by clicking like in, in the IntelliJ or, or, or in the logs just by looking at the stack trace you would see the actual line of the issue and if it was found in IntelliJ just by clicking you would go straight to that line 
so it's very easy to understand where is the issue it might not be easy to fix it but to identify what is causing is very easy or a broken build as well you're going to have the logs and going to have to fix could be an issue or it could be a bug itself could be an issue on the pipeline could be many many reasons right if nothing was found you would go to validation um, AQA person would pick it up or any other teams uh, have working teams where uh, didn't really matter who would pick it up uh, the only thing we we tried to do was who who the person that developed would not test would try to would not validate we would have another person validating so it would be a person who which had more experience uh, on QA could be writing the story, uh, writing the code itself, and a person that had more experience developing could uh, validate it. Right. The the whole point of this is to collaborate and everybody learn. So the person, uh, the QA person, uh, would be a better developer, and a developer would be a better QA. All right. If a issue was found, then we would go back to the beginning, right? We would kick back the story because the story did not meet the requirements. Also, that this depends on the process. This is <coughs> excuse me. This is just an example. I have worked with teams that would kick back the story, and that story would start from scratch. And I have worked with teams that would move forward the story and creating another story uh, to address whatever was missing or whatever bug was found. So you, you, you're going to realize that if we go back to the test pyramid, as soon as uh, I, I mentioned that issues on the base of the pyramid are cheaper to, to find, to resolve, to do whatever, right? And this is the, the, the case as well here because we can actually see that in the team because if an issue would be found here in this stage the person as I mentioned would have access straight to the root cause like to the line that is causing the issue and the person have the context because that person is coding that at that exactly same time as we go down the line here if you find an issue here rather where, where than here this means that this person here could already be on vacation this person could be on another story and uh, on the middle of another story and did not have the time to come back to the other story so meaning another person would pick it up this person could change teams could have changed teams could be on paternity or maternity leave this person could be sick this person could be on vacation this person could have left the company so all of those cases would mean that you take more time to get context even if this person uh, took that to resolve but only after vacation let's say 15 days one month that person already lost some context because after one month that person does not remember everything about that story it's going to need to get context again from the business requirements it's, it's going to need to get context again from whatever was written and it's going to lose some time so this is the best place to pick it up stuff right so moving on no issues found here uh, this story would be done you would go to production any issue here it'd be a prod bug which would be even more expensive it would take more time we are getting further and further away from this process here then from this moment here then it would for the reason that I just explained would be even more expensive all right, so just make sure this is the spot that we need to be getting more issues. Of course, you can do exploratory testing afterwards. You can do a bunch of other stuff, but the the coding coding along with writing unit test or whatever automation else you have and running those all the time is going to enable you to find or to prevent issues in this area here which would be f faster to fix and faster to to find faster to fix and cheaper right? so this is what we, we are trying to aim all right 
just one, one disclaimer is this is the ideal for me to maximize the ideal process of an agile team to maximize the what an agile team can do. You could be working on different uh, on different uh, ways of 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 what I'm showing here. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're not doing agile. <laughs> You could have different your Kanban board and your process could be very different, right? Uh, yeah. So, but this is not doing continuous deployment, right? What would be a team doing continuous deployment, right? So, a team doing continuous deployment would be the same the same thing all the way to here, but there would be no specific validation. The validation would, would not be a gatekeeping, meaning there would be no specific valid, uh, process saying if does not pass here we're not going to go production we're not going to go to production if this passes exactly here, if you reach this stage you'd go straight to production it could also go to validation if you want but those would be in parallel meaning that you'd go to production and you'd be available for validation. And how that is possible, right? Why I would need to validate something that's already in production, right? So there are various ways that we can go to production safely uh, in a continuous uh, deployment universe. So you're going to be monitoring and observe. You're going to monitor what you know, some specifics that you're going to the exactly what you're expecting the system to do in the outcomes of the system so you'll be watching for the endpoints you're going to be watching for uh the errors on those endpoints and so on and so forth and you're going to observe what you don't know right so we're going to have a very detailed observability uh, of the system and you're going to spot things you're going to have alerts saying hey the system it's it's still working but it's taking a little bit longer than you expect. You expect this endpoint to respond in 10 seconds, uh, sorry, 10 milliseconds, and it's taking double, triple of that. So the system is still working, but we can observe that something is wrong, or uh, we have more traffic than we use. That means that then we we are expecting to have. That means somebody might be have might have a bot or might trying to exploit something. Right? So you would observe stuff to make sure that uh, nobody or nothing is going wrong or not, nothing is going beyond a point that will be that will be wrong. You're going to have feature toggle, meaning you're going to have a if in your code saying if this is enabled, if this feature toggle is enabled, it's on, you're going to have access to this code. If it's not on, you're not going to have access to this code. And this is in, this enables for you to enable and disable a feature during runtime you can say hey i want this feature to be off nobody's going to access that until i decide when somebody's going to access that that could be even for a business you can have like a, a black friday process of a, a black friday feature that you, you just want to enable at black friday but it's going to be in your production and whenever the time comes you enable that you wouldn't have to do another deploy right you could also say this feature is only available on a specific uh production environment could have you could have two production environment and but let me go back to that let me go back a little let's do canary release in canary release i can say I'm, i would like to release this feature for one percent of my of my traffic and then two percent five percent all the way that if I don't have any issues on those small percentage and everything is going expected, I can release for everybody. I could also say this feature is going to be only lab enabled for whoever is in London and nobody else is going to get it. All right. Once I can, I can validate my assumptions and everything is working fine, uh, business related and, and, and system related in London, then I can open to the whole UK. I can open to the whole world. In blue green, which is mean, it means you have two production environments. You have an active and a, a un, and a uh, not active one. The active are the one, is the one that the users are currently using, and the not active one, the inactive is the one that uh, you are deploying right now. So you could deploy your CD, could deploy straight to the inactive, 
you could do any tests that you want, you could do performance test, stress test, you can do any validation because that is inactive, you can actually destroy that on your, with your testing because no, no user is going to be impacted. Once you are happy, you can switch the traffic to the, in, to the inactive one. Now the inactive becomes active and the active becomes inactive. So you have various ways to do a continuous deployment safely. Right. Uh, basically, that's what I, I wanted to show you uh, so far. Uh, we talk about the, uh, what is a API so far. We talk about API in, in, a, in a theory perspective. We're also talking about BDD and Teams process in a theory perspective. And now we're going to be going to in the next video. I'm going to be going to the actual BDD tools uh, and we're going to be focused on Cucumber but I'm going to briefly talk about all the tools that we have and also going to be talking about some experience that I had with BDD and if I thought that was useful or not, not all experience that I had, I thought that BDD helped uh, because of the process of the team and I'm going to go in details with that and we can move then to specific specification by example and actually creating the project. All right. Thank you for watching this far. If you like it, give the thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, so you can keep receiving the next videos. Thank you.